Good morning, folks. Today's show is even more jam-packed than yesterday's. We've got confused weather patterns, Mars, deep space discoveries, and one from the ancient past. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and start with the last day on our star. Sunspots departing, no solar flares, no large filaments, just a coronal hole incoming on the south from the left, the dark patch. Solar wind at Earth is intensified as we're in the coronal hole stream from the previous opening. While the purple speed ramp up is evident, the geomagnetic conditions remain relatively calm, and this is because for a planet that sees 600 to 700 km per second coronal hole streams, one that doesn't crack 500 here just isn't going to be too bad. If you can ignore the central dark patchiness in favor of that actual incoming coronal hole from the left we saw earlier, you know we've got another solar wind intensification coming this weekend, and until then, seismic alert ramps back up due to interplanetary magnetic field connectivity. Perhaps you heard a story about a sunspot from the next solar cycle. Well, let's start in 2012 here, beginning of the last sunspot max. Negative red leads on the north, and as the cycle draws on, the spots move towards the equator, like this last week's lateral spreading spot. Indeed, over time, as solar cycles roll on, we see a butterfly pattern to sunspot production in terms of heliographic latitude. New spots begin at higher latitude, and then as the cycle wears on, they move towards the equator. Well, that makes us look well into the northern hemisphere at a tiny sunspot group that popped up and quickly dissipated this week. It had a positive lead, switched from the core of cycle 24, and its polarity reversal combined with the high latitude position indicate it is likely a spot from the next cycle. Let's recall, though, there is overlap in the butterfly diagram, so the first spots of the next cycle do not yet officially designate the switching of the cycles that occurs at absolute sunspot minimum. Well, folks, we've been talking about the cold, snow, and hail. Good bit this month, especially in the United States. We have had another event, except this time, it is once again in Saudi Arabia. This is, in fact, the fourth major storm like this to hit in just the last few weeks. Very, very out of place. And speaking of out of place, this looks like it should either be in the Middle East or in the desert southwest of the United States, but in fact, it is Australia. Powerful pressure situation has high winds and electric uplift, and this dust storm is likely moving eastward towards more populated areas. Let's go to RESI, a predecessor satellite that helped inspire the SDO, has finally been retired. It not only was able to provide much better solar flare details than the SOHO satellite, which went up around the same time, but it could look back at Earth and spot terrestrial gamma flashes from powerful lightning. They say its data archive will be useful for years. They put out the October Global Climate Report. With the exception of the record marks in the north, it was a fairly normal month with hot and cold spread around. I want to note that the region with little coverage in Antarctica does indeed have coverage. The peninsula was above average and the rest very cold. Folks, last week we shared the ESA's newest landing spot on Mars for their upcoming mission, and NASA has announced theirs as well. The 2020 lander will come down on Jezero Crater, one they think was once flooded and which has a wide array of potential chemistry to explore. Of course, this all comes as InSight is just five days from landing on Mars and they're going to televise it and stream it live. I will share this again before that date arrives. Stay with me here, folks, as we head out to the discovery of a new magenta exoplanet. You may recall the Galice exoplanet fitting this description, and here we have ground optics confirming water vapor and a lack of methane in the atmosphere. This is how they plan to hunt for life signs in known exoplanet atmospheres. Last but not least, let's zoom in on the Dead Sea, sitting between Israel and Jordan, one of the most violent and contested regions of Earth in human history, and evidence exists of a great explosion 3,700 years ago. While we already know about the green glass in the desert and burned sand locations, this one is new and indicates a similar event hit the Jordan coastlines of the waters. An interesting thing is that there are desert regions and other preserved sites around the world, and this general location seems to have all the vitrification events. What are the chances meteors just love this part of the world? And what are the chances the ancient stories and evidence of advanced civilizations in the past are true? Folks, if you haven't been to suspiciousobservers.org and scroll down to find the numerous key videos in the community, I highly suggest you do so. This site is how the collective keeps going and pumps out these news each day. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.